Ron, you had a great experience working with a Brown's Hall cast and Barney Miller. When you were in the casting process, and this question's for everybody, when they're casting the show, Firefly, to begin with, what kind of reads did you guys do with each other? Or, uh, was there any kind of chemistry that, they, that the casting directors noticed when they were putting the show together? Or was it just, okay, I'm casting this individually, and oh, by the way, here's the doctor, and here's the mechanic, and here's the tough guy? Nobody cared what I thought about anything. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Actually, it's, it, it's just about 10 years since we started, since the pilot season came up, and we all got the, the role. It's really the 10 year anniversary of the casting of that. But we had a dinner that Joss took us to at a nice fancy Italian restaurant somewhere on the west side of uh, Los, Los Angeles. Yeah, Valentino's, yeah, Valentino's. And I remember asking Ron, I said, what's, what's the key to keeping something like this together and making sure that we don't get cranky at each other? And Ron said one of the most profound things that stuck, stuck with me to this day is just keep it about the work. He said that to me, just keep it about the work. And, uh, That's so lame. <laughs> we, we, failed, we failed miserably at it because that's why Joss, that's why Joss killed him in the movie. I don't have to take this shit. Do you and Tunic ever get on the phone with each other and go, man, what did we do to piss Wheaton off that much? Sean, what about you? Um, somebody, I... We've seen, we, we, we saw Adam in a, in a ton of stuff, Ron uh, in a couple of roles every now and then. We, we need to get you more work, Ron, seriously. But Sean, what was it like when you were, yeah, first couple of days on set where everybody's still feeling each other out and you know Nathan's obviously pulling the pranks on everybody and everything else. So what, what was it like for you coming into that kind of environment? Uh. <laughs> Leave it to the mechanic. I think we all started working the same day, right? Day one, except minus Miranda, because she wasn't casting. Miranda was the last to join the clan. Um, but I think it was we we shot first, but we were in the cargo bay, like the first. <laughs> Just remember. <laughs> Not no. that. <laughs> um, uh, so I, no, I, I, I mean I think we all we all talk about how it was sort of this instantaneous, you know, organic chemistry that we all had. Um, and it sounds like a cliche, but it's actually not. That, you know, we kind of all clicked right away, except for Marina. <laughs> but because she, wasn't, because she wasn't there yet. Um, I said, good job. Um, um, so yeah, there wasn't much gelling or feeling out. It was very, it was very easy, very fast, which is not the case um, on lots of sets in this industry. Joel, there are a lot of TV shows where it's either really strongly skewed towards men, really strongly skewed towards women. Very gender balanced cast for Firefly, really from the get-go. And you always hear the, the thing that Joss has to ask over and over again, why do you write so many strong female characters, blah, blah, blah. And if you haven't seen that, there's a great YouTube clip that Equality Now has on their website where Joss is accepting an award from him. And it's a very long, drawn-out answer, as Joss will do, on why female characters are so important for him to get right the first time. But what was it like working on one of his sets where it's a very balanced cast that way? I don't know. We <laughs> were there. That's a really complicated question, man. I know. <laughs> I like strawberries. <laughs> that way, honestly. Um, we were just such good friends. We were all really, really tight from the get-go. So it just, I don't know, never really, I just felt like I was with a family. Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, Marina was your maid of honor at your wedding for crying out loud. That's she a was. pretty, pretty boring. Now, yeah. by the way, I want to ask you guys something. Of the four people sitting up here on this table, how many, at least one of them, is on your special exemption list with your girlfriends or your wives? <laughs> Your 
<laughs> made the one to a notarized copy. It's not to make this awkward, okay. is it? I'm gonna read it. Go ahead. And it's been approved and signed by his wife. <laughs> no joke, there's a signature on it. Gina, Gina Caramo? Yes. Don't know who that is. Uh, she was in Haywire, that uh, Steven Soderbergh. Okay, Rosario Dawson? Not bad. Uh, Carla Cugino, she's hot. Uh, Christina Hendricks, she's hot. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, she's pretty hot. And me. <laughs> Who's Justin Bieber? <laughs> Your list, Adam, not mine. <laughs> hey. It's, it's been 10 years since, uh, and we'll do one round of booze for Fox. It's cathartic, it's out of your system. But even, even after the show wraps, the fans start a campaign to get the show released on DVD. It comes a massive hit on uh, DVD for Fox and a cash cow for them as well. Jewel, I know you've been to a couple of the Can't Stop the Serenity screenings out in California, and I'm, I'm sure you other guys have been involved too. What's it like to be, and anybody can answer this, to have a show that has this kind of an impact 10 years down the road after 13 episode run in one feature film, it's gotta be gratifying for your work. Anybody? We're gratified. <laughs> great question, great question. Good setup, good lead in. Uh, cl clearly, clearly this is a testament to Joss's vision and thank you all for getting it and, and seeing it and embracing it and enjoying it and I'd just like to echo the whole family atmosphere and how well I think they cast everyone in the, in the, uh, in the show. And I uh, just wish we'd had three million more of you here's <laughs> eyeballs. <laughs> You've grown old as Jane, Grandpa Jane. If they were able to put a Subway restaurant on Serenity, do you think the show would have lasted a couple more seasons? taught fans, if you don't get vocal about the shows that you love, like Chuck, then you're not going to be able to get further episodes of it. Because fan-driven shows like Firefly, you watch them in groups, you watch them, you know, you have parties around them on Friday nights at 8 o'clock, and thank you, Fox, for that. But at the same time, Nielsen says, well, no, that's one TV watching it. So at least that taught shows down the road, like Chuck, that you, you have to get vocal about it and write letters to your sponsors. So... And, and by the way, congratulations on a great season finale and a series finale. Yes, in the words of the inimitable Nathan Fillion. Thank you! <laughs> Hang on a second. You guys all have your cell phones here, don't you? One of you has Nathan Fillion on speed dial. <laughs> One of you has got to have Nathan's number. <laughs> Need to call him and find out why he's not here. <laughs> While Adam is pulling that up, um, the microphone for questions is right over here. Just to make sure that everybody can actually hear your question, please start queuing up over here at the mic. We'll get to you. Oh, he'll answer you. Oh, you're both going to call and see who answers first? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's looking at that number. Sure. Hey, guys. Um, my name is Doug Goodrich. I'm with uh, YouTube, the first social TV network, and that's kind of what my question is for you guys. How are you guys with social networking? Do you update your own Twitter, your Facebook? What's your favorite website? I'll tell you right now, I've gotten in uh, political arguments with Adam here. I have on a robot Twitter, so. that uh, doesn't have <laughs> like a robo Twitter account. Uh, so, no, I'm, I'm just too busy golfing. Uh, <laughs> what is Twitter? <laughs> just ask somebody to tweet you. We're going to leave a message, okay? Hang on.
is his voicemail just leave a message by? Is that what it is? Just, hey, this is me, leave it. And then he's out. Adam, um... What do you think he says? This is the captain of... <laughs> Billy Connolly, Billy Connolly from the Boondock Saints, an amazing Scottish comedian. We did the same trick to him when we were doing Boondock Saints too, and it was the nastiest outgoing message I've ever heard in my life. It was absolutely awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, Next okay. question, please. Hi, I. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> um, for each of you, do you have a very particular um, favorite moment in either the movie or the episodes that you shot? Yeah, one of my favorites is <clears throat> when we're going into the bar. <laughs> and uh, yeah, little Kaylee here says something about Twixter and others. <laughs> I just thought it was just a darling moment. <laughs> I can stand here some more. <laughs> That, but my, my truly my favorite was that whole uh, uh, mule chase. That that was one of the most early on scenes we shot, and it was very physical. It was a lot of rehearsal and jumping around that that mule and on you know cable work. And it was it was one of the funnest, most fun few days of work. How about you? Um, my one of my favorite moments is when Sean gets shot. And, um, <laughs> I have two favorite moments. But I love uh, that scene where um, you say to River, River, I'm sorry. It kills me. It makes me cry. <laughs> and I also love that scene where we make out. <laughs> Stun punching, and I'm hoping that people were pulling their punches. Yes, yes. Yeah, but, um, but didn't I think during the movie didn't che uh, Chewie and Nathan had uh, some issues, crazy fight scenes, <laughs> and he had trouble. Chewie had trouble not actually punching and fighting and kicking and <laughs> beat up after uh, after shooting that. Yeah, Nathan um, was a lot. Of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then my other favorite moment is when I get shot, but it's after... <laughs> uh, but, but it's after I get shot, when I'm laying there, when... My favorite moment, for some reason, in that movie is when Miranda says, put pressure here. And like everyone always asks, like, so what's your... And for me, because it was just um, being surrounded by all of us, it was like... I, I think it was Nathan who was saying he loved that moment, and he just said it too, thank you. But it was so easy for me to look up at everybody around there, and it was just, just sort of felt, um, I don't know, like one of those genuinely uh, wonderful moments as an actor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> and Ron. In Serenity, I loved the last moment before I took my last breath. <laughs> I was talking to Joss the other day, and that's his favorite moment. <laughs> Awkward. Oh, it's a little late. <laughs> so awkward. Uh, I, mean, I know that uh, most of y'all probably didn't expect the show to have the kind of impact that obviously you did, but uh, specifically Jewel. Um, I used you as an example to get my daughter to go out and learn how to change the tires on my one-time piece of paper. I told her, did you expect that uh, you were going to be such an outstanding, strong role model, not just for women to do valuable, important 
uplifting things, but stuff like teaching their boyfriends how to change a damn tire. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I mean, you heard those stories all the time with Michelle Nichols from Star Trek, where she was a, a, a black woman role model on TV every week, um, very capable officer, and people got into engineering careers for it. And I know for a fact that's the case, not just from changing the tires, but I know people who have gone to mechanic school because it's not just for guys, it's for lovely women who love strawberries and pretty dresses, too. <laughs> I, I can't take credit. I mean, it's all it's all Joss. He he wrote he it. He wasn't I just in the dress <laughs> that we know, know of. Yeah, I, I, you know, you don't know what he's doing after hours. No one knows. I don't know where that dress is, but my guess is it's in Nathan Fillion's basement somewhere. Tell me, Chris Evans wear it right now on the set of The Avengers. Yes. Um, just question to everyone. Not really pertaining to as much, but what's the most fun you've had on any project in your acting career, I suppose? <laughs> the most fun I've ever had working was on Serenity because of well, the movie, uh, the, the series as well, but the movie was something so special because it was a, a series that was canceled and it was resurrected by Joss's just determination. So. I think we all we all just approached it as something that we we knew it was really this special uh, opportunity for us all to recreate roles that we had lost and when it was we were all heartbroken, and devastated when it was uh, was canceled. So to have that uplifted again was just magical. So for me, that's the most fun I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you. I agree with you. It, I think it was closure that everybody needed, and it had a different feel to it because when we were doing the series, we were always worried about losing our jobs. And the movie had a beginning, a middle, and an end as far as you know, a start date and an end date. So I think, sorry, Ron. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> hey guys, the movie's a little bit of a sore subject with Ron Glass. Um, but yeah, I just remember laughing a lot and having a lot of fun on that Especially set. when Ron died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, I came home and I was like, why are my cheekbones so sore? Because this one and I laughed for, what, 18 hours? It was a, a grueling shoe. Like, work till 7 a.m., back at 7 p.m., like, work till. It was. And we had those huge giant fans on us, remember? When, <laughs> and it was freezing, freezing yeah. cold. And we were just sat in the corner cackling at everybody. We were laughing hysterically. How many blown takes? How many blown takes? None. None, None. for us. <laughs> None for us. No way. No. We're professionals. <laughs> you look real professional in your spandex purple suit. And that would be my least favorite moment of my career. I'm happy to put that thing I just on. remember Sean <laughs> coming out of his trailer. <laughs> It was one piece, so it wasn't like I had pants on and a top, it was one piece, so it was like a leotard, which pulled up in that area, so... <laughs> Every, uh, kind of. 
but after, so good. It was, <laughs> but like, at first I was shy about. I would go like this. I would, I'd be like, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Okay, but I couldn't like reach down and shift, so I had to like yank and pull. <laughs> I was just grabbing my crotch the whole time. I was like, no, you didn't yeah, care yeah. after I was a while. Like, I don't care. I was like, what are you doing? You're like, I'm grabbing my balls. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm shifting. <laughs> it was very uncomfortable. Ron, when was your spandex moment? <laughs> About three minutes ago. <laughs> Ron, there's got to be a, a favorite moment in your career, Firefly or not. You know, I mean, working with the great cast of Lee Miller, the, the amazing roles you've done for your career. You know, it's 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 weird. I I, I should have um, I should have anticipated this question. <laughs> um, but I guess one of the things that you know, I'm not real big on improv. And so one of the things that happened on Barney, for example, was that um, there was a scene where um, Barney got really uh, kind of confrontational with me. And there was some kind of an issue about blackness or something. And the way the thing was written, I didn't like the way the thing was written. And so um, Danny said to me, so, no, 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 you know what? It was on All in the Family, it wasn't on Barney Miller. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the producer said to me, okay, so you don't like things, so what would you say? And I said, I don't know what the hell I would say. I said, you know, I don't do improv, I don't do the writing, you write, I'll act it. And so then he says, but, 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 but what would you say? And I was, I was angry. And I said something that just came, out of, just came out of my anger. And he said, perfect, let's do it. Let's go shoot it. So that kind of, you know, that kind of moment was, was um, it comes out of frustration. It comes out of frustration, but it was, it was, it was very real. And I didn't have time to, to, you know, to work it. And so those kinds of moments were, with that, that, that was really, Gratifying. So, somebody it wasn't funny, but it was gratifying. <laughs> somebody had mentioned to me that if they did Barney Miller, yeah, please give him another round. Are you black? <laughs> Someone had mentioned to me that if they did, uh, if they, if, if you know, since Hollywood is intent on eating itself and remaking everything that was good in the 70s and 80s, if they ever remade Barney Miller, they would cast Adam in Max Gale's part as Roger Holmes. Can you see that? In, in, in the Taekwondo outfits and all the rest of it? Max Gale was in DC Cab. Yes, he was. Uh, I met him then, so after, after you guys had done that, I remember he, uh, he, he took me to his, he had a sweat lodge uh, up in Malibu. <laughs> and I, I had no idea what the, what the heck is a sweat lodge, but you go in there and it's hot and you sweat and drink tea or something. Something. Uh, iced tea because it's so hot. Oh, yeah. but, uh, I haven't seen it happen. He was one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Max Gale, he's just this cool, laid back Malibu hippie, which is like the opposite of his character, so it's a testament to his, his skill. Yes, sir. Mr. Adam Baldwin, I first encountered your work, as so many young boys do, on an illegally copied VHS of Full Metal Jacket. From then on, I've loved you. I love how in Angel, it takes both David Boreanaz and the whiny guy from Mad Men to give you a beatdown. <laughs> and my question for the panel was, if you could indulge us with a favorite Adam Baldwin moment that you might have <laughs> bunch of those. <laughs> yeah, one of my, no, one of, one of my favorite ones was when we were, we were shooting that scene in Serenity um, where we were all up in the bridge and we were going through reverse space and we were staring at nothing, a green screen. They weren't real. And they weren't real. They're not real.
real, guys. Um, There's no such thing as reverbs. No, not real. Um, and uh, we were supposed to be all scared, and Joss is, is talking us through the take. And he's like, okay, you're going through. Everyone's really scared. Look to the left. There's one there. Look to the right. It's very creepy, da da da. And Adam is like making this noise. <laughs> he was like in the back and he was like, So Adam would sit there and, and with every scene and touch, 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 which is always annoying, but in retrospect, kind of funny. But you know what else that you taught me actually, as an actor to an actor, among many things, of course, was that you always had to have a prop in your hand and you had to be doing something in the background. So like, if the scene wasn't about you, you would still try to find a way to make it about you. So, if you were doing something in the background with a prop, the editor would have no choice but to cut to you later to show what it was that you were doing, hence more screen time. And it's something that I have taken away. So thank you, thank you. All right, Ron, it's Roast Adam Baldwin, go. Um, this actually happened off stage. Um, we had trailers next to each other, and in my old-fashioned kind of way, I'm kind of the guy that likes to kind of like, I like to, you know, prepare. It's, it's kind of an old-fashioned thing, right, Adam? <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, I kind of like to prepare, and, and with that, I do it kind of like, you know, quietly and, and you know, sort of by myself. Um, like I said, he was right next door to me with the loudest damn music <laughs> that he never, never, never stopped playing. And I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't bring myself to say anything about it. And so I would just kind of like, instead of preparing, I would just fume. <laughs> it was time for me to actually... <laughs> Yes. He's a Metallica-ist. <laughs> was it just a bunch of speed metal on the trailer all the time? A bunch of speed metal, a bunch of loud rock and roll. You bet. Sorry. <laughs> Nobody said anything to me. Gina was the first one that actually came up and said, you know, we're sick of it. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. I had no idea. The headphones, then. I really had no idea. Now, if Ron had asked you the same question, would you have said live with it? Maybe they're just as scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, this is garbled. I feel like I'm meeting my heroes. Uh, Jewel, I know you're not a mechanic. Sean, you're not really a doctor. Ron, you might be a secret agent. Uh, I firmly believe that, uh, Adam, you could be the agent as well that could break all our necks. Uh, please don't. Uh, but my question is, I know Alan Turdick had a couple of uh, plots that he wanted to work in that uh, just okay, never got around to. Uh, pause. Yeah. Pronounce the man's name. Turdick. <laughs> I like that. No, 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 seriously. T-U-R-D-I-C-K. I thought it was Jules Satie as well. 
Please continue. It's, it's too dick. He, he was teased at school. <laughs> Thank God. He's he, he said he? Oh, oh, well, were there other uh, plot points that you guys wanted to do that weren't explicitly written that were kind of your own projects? I'll take, I'll, I'll take this one. Purple leotard moment. What was that? Plot points what? Um, that you wanted to work in on your own. Like, uh, two dicks wanted, uh, or Alan. <laughs> 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 you know, Alan wanted to be in the uh, you know, to have gone through the worst uh, lockups in the verse um, by telling funny stories, but just never got worked in. Did you guys have anything similar? I kept fighting with Joss about Jane's relationship with. Uh, <laughs> was it with Vera? No, no, no. <laughs> um, I mean, Anara, yeah. And he said, no, there's no chance. <laughs> I said, I said, you're missing something real good. Because <laughs> Maria, uh, Maria, I mean, uh, Anara, she's like uh, Jane's perfect woman. <laughs> Very intimidating, but just in every way perfect. Uh, but he said, no, no freaking way. <laughs> like, oh, okay. So I, I failed. I, I always wanted uh, Kaylee and Simon to have a baby. Aww. You agree with me, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once again, but before we do that, Jane hats. Wearing a Jane hat, stand up. Stand up. I want to count how many are actually. You see this? Whoever knits the, those, and I know there are several people that do, has found a nice little niche, niche market. Yeah, so, a good entrepreneurial spirit there. Like, like, it's not as good as when Riley got the stout head of you in the last time that you were here, though. That was that was pretty impressive. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we, you, only, we only have forty five minutes for this panel. Yeah. I mean, I I I'd love to eat an Eliza Dushku this time, but you know that. Oh <laughs> yeah, let's. <laughs> Of course, the hallmark of great sci-fi is to deal with contemporary social issues in a palatable, timeless manner. And you're complaining about my questions, guys? <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, 2000, we had quite an upheaval with our elections, and y'all's had dealt with that, with the colonizing and the fighting and whatnot. 
was that representative of what happened with the kind of split our country had and would further go on to? And also, Jewel, you mentioned in the commentary of the DVD that you that Joss asked you to gain 20 pounds for your character. Um, do you also do you feel like that also kind of rebelled against this thing where women in, in film are asked to get thinner and thinner to a point where it's actually dangerous? <laughs> How the, Laker, how, how the Lakers doing this year? How the Kings doing this year? Uh, I, I think that's Joss's whole thing. He likes to rebel, you know? He likes to rebel uh, against lots of things in the industry, especially where women are concerned. He wants women to be women. He wants women to look like women. I, for one, am all for that, especially if I get to eat cheeseburgers all the time. <laughs> now you get to answer the other question. <laughs> all right, I will. Don't be... I have no clue about that. <laughs> no clue whatsoever. Joss was really, uh, I think he, he, he focused, as many, many uh, sci-fi writers do, on individual frontier. I love the frontier aspect. And the uh, the struggle out there, so I think that's uh, that's quite the spirit we have here too. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that answer and keep it brief. Um, but I love the hats. Yeah. 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 Thank you. We'll squeeze in one more. We'll only get Eliza partially mad at us. Go. We, let's end on a high note. Ask us a good question. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a question kind of from New Hampshire because my mom lives there. She says, "When are you gonna give her some love up in New England? She never gets to see you guys." So the question, My mom lives up in New Hampshire. Really? Yeah. They make room for you, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, is obviously you guys are really close. How often do you guys get to get together outside of this and what's coming here today kind of a, yeah, we get to have a reunion and we plan this? Ron. <laughs> Sean and I live about <clears throat> two minutes apart. This is the first time I've seen him in about five years. <laughs> And it's great. <laughs> um, no, uh, obviously that's for for us. One of the biggest perks of coming here is to see, you know, the actors. I haven't seen Adam in, in something like that. No, no, no. Since two thousand five, seven years. It's been a while. I mean, we're all so busy. We're never all in town. At the same time, and he lives us. over in a really crappy neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Near Ron. <Yeah. laughs> um, no, so of course it's, it's it's amazing to come together and and, and see one another, except you. <laughs> Sarcasm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I just moved back to Vancouver. Uh, I was living in LA for a while. And two Sean, blocks from me. Two blocks from you. And I Sean and I were... Uh oh, oh, oh. And I never saw her oh. either. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but Sean and I used to go to Pilates together. <laughs> Swim, hang out with the kids. Yes, and drink lots of wine. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Um, and I just saw Nathan last weekend. He flew up to Vancouver and we went out for dinner and ended up <laughs> talking in British accents till one in the morning, laughing hysterically over nothing and embarrassing ourselves. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I love I love seeing you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And we're gonna, oh god, here we go. I'm scared. I can do Pilates. <laughs> but the shoe's not sick. Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Funny, I was in the airport and I, I looked back in the security line and about 15 people back was uh, Sean. And I just looked back up. 
And it was just like, there's this connection of, because we shared such a love, we, it was such a great experience. There's, there's shows you work on that aren't so great. But when you see people from a show that is just part of your heart, it's just, oh, immediate connection and love, just bingo. I'll, I'll skate out through the line. Fortunately, he had his little uh, American Express Platinum card, so it got, got me into the lounge thing. Apparently, if you have an American Express Platinum card, you can get into the lounge. I did not know that. It Membership has its privileges. Yes, it does. <laughs> I don't have one. Um, I don't fuck around. Ron Glass, Sean Mayer, Jules Stay, Adam Baldwin.